Hi, and welcome to Horizon. I'm so excited you're here because today we're gonna take a quick 101 tour of build tools. The first thing you're gonna do when you're in your personal space is we're gonna open up our menu. And from our menu, in the bottom right, you're gonna see the Create tab. When we click on the Create tab, there's lots of options in here, and you might not see too much here in the recently edited because I've been working on a lot of projects. They're all visible here. But if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see things like tutorials, intro to creation, mastering tools, script basics, script samples, and there's even a tab for tutorials up here. And this stuff is great. Tutorials are a great way to get started, but they're not the best because they don't really explain what's happening. So going through intro to creation is what I'd recommend you do first, then check out mastering tools and scripting basics. Script samples are really cool because you can dissect them and learn about them. But if there's something you really want to learn and you can't find a video about it on our channel, definitely just ask in the comments and we'll get a video together for you as soon as possible. Now that you've done some of these, or even if you haven't, we're going to go ahead and create our first world. So you click new world and you're going to note that there's blank world, grassy meadow, rocky island. They also have rich environments like the twisting temple and these are fully built out so you can actually dive right in and just add what you want to add. But what I'd recommend you do if, if you choose one of these is actually destroy almost everything except for a few things that you absolutely love and then recreate it to make it really your own. And then at the bottom, they've got scripting environments that you can go into. And if you take these scripting environments, it comes with the scripts already in there so you can utilize the scripts that have been pre-built. So those are really cool too. But today we're gonna start in a blank world. So we're gonna go hit create. And from the create section here, you can see it starts as blank world. We're gonna go ahead and change this to logger. All right. And logger is gonna be a mini game. So this series, we're gonna be building a logger mini game, but it starts here in the building section. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create. If I was in a party, I could have invited my party using this lower button, which is really cool because collaboration in Horizon is what makes this all possible. Now we're currently in the assembling worlds page. Sometimes you get frozen here, not usually when you're creating a world, but if you're traveling and you get frozen in here and you're just waiting for a couple minutes, then what you wanna do is open up your Oculus menu and then restart Horizon. It's just a current bug. But look, we've now landed here in the empty grid. Oh my gosh, look at this grid. Oh, and there's something down here. Now that is a bug I've never seen before. There, this was in the ground, how interesting. Anywho, now that we're here, the first thing you need to do is know how to get into build mode like that. So to do that, look at your right hand and you're gonna notice this black thing. When you pull down on your joystick, it brings you here into build mode. And build mode is where almost everything happens. There's one key thing that doesn't happen in build mode and I'll show you that real quick. From inside of here, when we open up our menu, you can see all of the world properties. So here you can manage collaborators, we can add collaborators, and from the add collaborators, you're gonna see all your friends who are online. You'll also be able to scroll through your offline friends. And so this is a great way to get other artists and scripters and everybody to come together to work on a project. But do keep in mind that a lot of people are busy, so you wanna, you know, either find a partner in crime to work on the project or just recognize that sometimes people have other projects they're working on. Now from here, there's other amazing things you can do like these three dot icons where you can duplicate the world. So if you wanted to make a copy but only edit one of those copies, duplicate world is a great choice for that. We can also go back to the create tab and under the create tab, you're gonna see that we can check out some of our other worlds like this butterfly demo world I just published. Even though I'm not in the butterfly demo world, I can still manage collaborators, but the three dot icon has a lot more options, including import world. Don't recommend using delete world because everything can be saved forever, right? But import world is pretty valuable because you can bring this butterfly that I created into this world that we just created. So if you're a part of a bunch of different worlds or maybe you create an asset and you save it in an empty world, when you import it, you can now access that in all of your worlds. So import world is really powerful. The other thing that's really cool and you'll have access to this once logger is published is go to the published world page, which shows you the actual public page. So this is what everybody sees when they look up butterfly demo, where you can hit a like, you can also hit the three dot icons. You'll notice there's launch an open session or launch a closed session. So if you wanted to have a private session if you want to have an open session. I recommend an open session if you're trying to invite new people you've never met to check out your world. So this is definitely worth doing. And that is the basics of what you can do while you're in regular play mode. Now we're going back by pulling down the joystick into create mode. Okay, so let's get the basics of moving down. So moving, you grab with your right hand's middle finger or your left hand's middle finger and you can pull yourself around. 
This is pretty simple and I make it look really easy, but I've had a ton of practice. So flicking my wrist like this to get some motion, some people get motion sick with that. So be careful how you move around here. When I first started six months ago, this motion got me super motion sick. It took me, I like, I would be motion sick after 15 minutes. So I could only do this in 15 minute intervals. If that's you, no worries. Just take your time. You're going to build up stamina. I can now spend hours a day in here without even the slightest motion sickness. So this is awesome. Now that you've got moving down, so remember that's your middle finger, it's the one right below your pointer finger when you're grabbing to move around, you can also rotate and scale yourself. So right now we are at probably oh, seven scale. So if I grab with both middle fingers and pinch, I can now zoom in or I can go the opposite direction to zoom out. And you can get really big, like really, really big. This is absurdly big and it's really easy to lose sight of where you're going. So I do not recommend being big. In fact, I actually recommend the opposite, going really small because you can go below the 1x. And so here we're at 0.2x. So if we're working on fine details, but we're going to go ahead and hang out here around the 10x mode. And now what we're going to look at is our hands. There is a lot going on in our hands and I don't want you to worry about it one bit. We're going to go through all of it. The first thing you need to know about is your menu system. So similar to when you're in play mode and you go to your left hand, there's the wrist icon right here. Now, if you've been using this your entire time, great for you, no biggie, but there's a really cool trick I wanna show you. On your left hand, there's an indented button and if you press it, you can open this menu really easily and close it. It's way faster than looking at your wrist. So definitely check that out, but we use the exact same button. So remember, this isn't the A or the B button, but it's the indented button, similar to your Oculus button on your right hand, but it's on your left hand. And so you'll see it right there. And if we press down, it brings up our build menu. And just wanna quickly note that if you go to your settings tab here on the far right, you can actually change your dominant hand to be left-handed. And if you are on left-handed mode, everything's gonna be in reverse. Just to recap, when you press the indented button, you're gonna bring up your menu where you'll have access to both build, style, world, script, and settings. There's a lot here. Do not worry. We're gonna take this piece by piece. So the next thing I wanna show you is when you hold down your menu button and hold, you can actually teleport or move around if you continue holding where it's located. So you can get it to the exact right location. For the video, I'm gonna hold it relatively close to my face so that way you can see it. But there's another cool trick with your menu. You can grab it with two hands and scale it bigger or smaller. And that is also really quite cool. Before we get into build settings, I would like to close out of our build menu and talk about a couple quick tools on here. First of all, we have our person icon. And when you press forward on your joystick, this is gonna allow you to have a circle appear and you can spawn into the world wherever that circle is. So now I have spawned in here. And if I go back to build mode, you can see that if I just press up one time, it's actually gonna teleport me to the world spawn point. So now I've teleported in at the world spawn point rather than where my circle was. So that's by pressing one time versus pressing and holding. From our shapes tab, you're gonna see all the basic primitives that we can work with. And these are awesome. You can actually go in here and grab them out with your hand. And that's a cool trick. But the other amazing thing you can do with the build menu is using this ray cast. That's what this line is called. This is a ray cast. You can actually point, grab, and it teleports it to your hand. And so this is super useful. And so I'd like to just go ahead and grab a few shapes out. And then we're going to show you how you can move these around and create your own creations. Okay, well, we have a bunch of shapes around. We're going to go ahead and close out of the menu by pressing down that button again. And what we're gonna do first of all, is just learn how to move these around. So you grab with your pointer finger. So remember, you use your middle finger to move around the space and we use our pointer finger to grab and move. And so by using my pointer finger, we can position these. And what I'd like to do is start by creating a very unique forest. And so we have these really interesting shapes and we can move them around, but how can we really make them more unique? So the first thing you need to know is that when you're grabbing an object, you can grab it with two hands to scale it and make it bigger. Now this scales it evenly. And then once you've done, once you're done scaling it evenly, you can actually see these red, blue, and green points on it. And when you put your hand into these points, there's an arrow going up, there's an arrow going to the side, and there's a square at the bottom. These three are all very important and have very distinct functions. So when we go into the square, we can stretch the object and make it taller. We can make it 
like shorter and fatter and we can get really unique shapes out of these basic primitives look if we come over here to this green edge we can actually push this in and now we've got kind of a really interesting looking shape but to make it really look like a tree if we go back to this red one and use that arrow the arrow allows us to slide up or in this case we're going to slide down and now it looks like a tree is kind of coming out of the ground the next thing that we have on this list is the sideways arrow, which allows you to rotate it. Now this is awesome because you can then duplicate one of these objects, which we'll get to in a minute, and then rotate it so it looks similar, but it'll also be different. The next thing we're gonna do is grab one of these tree toppers. So we got this guy here, but I'm thinking for this unique looking tree, let's actually go with this boy. And so we'll bring this around and just kind of place it in a general vicinity. And once we have that about where we like it, we can go back to these grab points and stretch this out. And you might be thinking that doesn't look anything like a tree, but I'm gonna call this a tree. I don't care. <laughs> this is my tree, this is my world. I'm gonna make it what I want. So the next thing I'd like to show you here is if we put our hand into this object, we can then grab this blue point here without disrupting this other object. So now I can grab this blue stretch point and stretch this around. But what I really think this needs to look more like a tree is to come back to this red point and give this a little bit of rotation to make it feel like it's really pushing out of the ground and maybe even stretch this in a little bit and stretch this maybe up actually kind of no maybe that's just fine going down a little bit yeah so now we've got this really unique and you wouldn't even guess that this was the macaroni shape it's just so different and unique i don't know that i would necessarily assume this is a tree right now what i would like to show you at this point is how we can interact with these objects a little bit further because it's very easy to grab try to grab this object and accidentally grab this object because they're now overlapping so if you're only working on the tree top and you know you're done with the tree base on your right hand you're going to see a lock icon and if you pull down on your joystick you're going to enable lock mode lock mode means you can click on an object so you press down one time on your trigger finger and that's going to lock it in and you can click again to unlock it and now that i have this locked there's no way for me to interact with this other than We'll get, well, we'll get into it. But, <laughs> but the point is, this is the main one I can interact with. It doesn't matter if this like highlights red at all, I can still grab and interact with this one. And now that I've moved this out of position that I worked on really hard, I'm gonna show you the undo button. So on your left hand, you're gonna see this undo button. If we press undo, it moves it back into its previous position. You can also undo scales and a lot of other things. So undo is really gonna be your friend. So now that we've got this tree set up kind of the way I like it, let's go back to our lock button and unlock this. And now there's painting. So you're gonna notice paint is to the left. So you can quickly switch to your paint tool by joysticking to the left. But I'd like to do something else first before we jump into painting this way. Let's go paint what I'd consider the right way. And so to do that, we open up our build menu and down at the bottom, you're gonna see style. Now style is gonna bring up all these colors and we have four different palettes to choose from. So we can click on the discovery palette. We've got dreams, harmony, stroll, a lot of different options here. And we're gonna to go to dreams because I think this is a dreamy world. And so under our materials, we have solid, we've got plastic, we've got metal, we've got glow and we have unlit. Solid is basically like what you see on the ground. It's just kind of a blank solid. Plastic has a little bit of reflection. Then there's metal, which is like a darker tone with a lot of um, reflecting of light. There's glow, which is emitting light. It doesn't have any edges. There's no shadows casting on it. It's putting off light. And unlit is the exact same, except for it doesn't put off light. So I'll quickly show you those. We're going to go ahead and grab this glowing green. That is unlit. If we make it lit, you're gonna see this slider up here where we can choose how lit is it. And so here we can change it. And even though it's at 50%, it doesn't show green on here, but it's putting off a lot of green light as you can see on the ground. But if we go down lower to like 3%, you'll be able to see that it's green. And you'll notice that there's no edges because these two have blended together. So I don't recommend using this. Um, unless you really want to not see the edges. And so we're gonna go and look at metal next. And so we'll go ahead and put metal down here. So that's what metal looks like, pretty cool. There's also a metal slider, so you can just determine how intense it is. So that's a more intense metal. And then if we go to our plastic setting, we can do the exact same with plastic. So now we've got this really reflective plastic or we can go lower and it becomes a little less reflective. 
And last but not least, we're back to solid, which is where I'd like to stay. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this top solid and we're going to actually maybe give it this kind of, that's a really interesting green. And so then maybe we'll go back to our bold discovery and grab this kind of, there we go. So now we've got this really interesting looking tree and it actually for the first time now looks like a tree like a really unique tree, but it does look like a tree. So we'll go ahead and close out of our menu. And the next thing I wanna show you is how to duplicate this tree. So what I recommend doing when you're duplicating is to make sure that everything is aligned, but we're not gonna get into snapping just yet. There's a lot to talk about with snapping. So in this case, what we're gonna do is first go ahead and grab this, grab this, and this is relatively aligned. So if we go to our duplicate tool, that's joystick to the right. I was in hand tool and now I'm in duplicate tool. And now when I come over here, I could duplicate stretch. I don't recommend doing that because it looks like that, which is weird. There might be a purpose for it, but not today. You can also duplicate rotate, which is actually a lot more useful because there's a lot of ways that you can see this would be useful, but we're gonna go ahead and undo that as well. And what we're gonna actually use is the slide tool. Duplicate slide is the most useful because you can just move an object over. Now what you're gonna see has happened is because this wasn't perfectly level, it's come out of the ground a little bit. So what we're gonna to need to do is slide this into the ground, maybe give it a different height, and then we're gonna rotate it. And now it's starting to feel like a little bit of a bog, like this could use some water to make it a little boggy. And that is two trees. So this is pretty cool. And you could even go and see with these two objects selected, we can actually scale them at the same rate. So we could actually stretch it, make it taller even, even though it's like, wow, that actually worked way better than I expected. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually really like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that duplicate tool one more time and we're gonna pull this over and then we're gonna stretch it back down. And so you're gonna note that I'm quickly switching between my duplicate tool and my hand tool, because if I kept it on duplicate tool while I was stretching it, remember stretching still duplicates. So I have to switch back to my hand tool by pressing joystick up. And then once I'm done with these, I can even lock them in place. But with these two selected, I'd like to actually form a grouping. And to form a grouping, this is really powerful because it allows you to make sure these objects are always linked in this way. So I put my hand inside of the selection and you're gonna see two new icons pop up. So I can deselect by pointing joystick to the right or I can group by going joystick to the left. So I'm gonna go group by joystick to the left. And now that I've grouped these objects, they are connected. So even when I let go, they're still connected in this way so I can stretch them and they're gonna stay. It's just, it's really quite cool. In fact, I actually liked that stretch. Let's let's go back to that and we give it a little bit more thickness. So now I've got three really unique trees. We kind of have our average, our tall, and our fat. And these are awesome. I really love having unique trees. And despite the fact that these are just two objects, they really have their own character. And so now when we start forming a bog, we could use these other shapes to make trees too. But in this case, we're not going to. We're going to leave these as our three primary trees so we can have a consistent theme in our bog. And so what I'd like to do is go grab this. So remember, you use your hand tool to grab it. Now you're gonna notice when it's grabbed, there's a couple more tools that come up. So the first thing I wanna show you is the duplicate tool. So duplicating, is what we already saw before, except for it leaves a duplicate where we left it, and you get to keep holding on to the original. That's really cool. Now we can go hit the undo button to undo those. So when we grab it again, you're gonna note that there's a delete button at the bottom. So we can use the trash can to delete objects. And so we're just gonna go to all of these, but if you have a lot of objects to delete, one really cool trick is you can click and you'll see these minus and plus sign when you're holding down your pointer finger. And you can drag through multiple objects to select them. And once they're selected, you can put your hand inside and then pull down to delete. So remember, we saw the group mode as well, but we didn't have to use that. And the other cool thing you can do with your selector is see this little line that's coming out to tell you that you've got selection enabled? Watch this. If we go joystick to the plus symbol, there's this just ball and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And trust me, there are times when you need a big ball to select a bunch of small objects. And so that was a really easy way to select these two objects. We'll put our hand inside and then pull down to delete. And now we're just left with our three trees. We're doing great. Remember, this world is gonna be about logs. So we'll get to that, but for now, we need to continue with some more basics. So let's go open up that build menu again. From our build menu, we've gone through these shapes really briefly, so you understand how to pull them out, resize them. But there's also a few more shapes that we're gonna get into, just we're gonna overview today, and you're gonna get a lot more information on these later. So first of all, we have gizmos. 
Gizmos are really powerful and they're gonna allow you to do a lot of amazing things. So we have particle effects, so you can put off particles. We have environment, which allows you to change the environment, to change the day settings, or to change the volume of the player. We also have doors, which link to other worlds you've created. We have scripting, which allows you to make incredible, amazing animations among teleportation and so much more. Scripting is very powerful. Then we've got trail effects, which allows you to paint a trail. We then have text, which allows you to place text in the world. The sound recorder, which allows you to record your voice. You can even change the pitch to make it sound like a different character. Then we have the spawn point, which is used in teleporting. It's also used to make our world spawn and it comes default with the world. And then we have trigger, which is also used in scripting. And there's a lot of powerful tools here. We are going to get into that in the next video, but I just wanted to show you the right here. The next thing you're going to see is sounds and soundscapes are going to allow you to paint the world with audio. And so in here we have effects and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of audio effects. We've also got background effects like a factory machine, a quiet park, and there's a ton of these. So you're really going to be able to make it sound like what you want. And then we've got music. So you can really set the theme, make it fun. Lots of different options in here. Sounds and music and background and effects. These are also super powerful and we're going to get into this a lot more in the future, but I want to show you where they're at. We're going to go to style and we've gone over style pretty thoroughly so everything in here is used for painting objects so this is really cool stuff the one thing I will mention is that if you wanted to make an object that light passed through you could use unlit and light will pass through it. So if you had say an invisible wall and you didn't want it to cast shadows, using the unlit option is definitely your best bet. Forward from here, we have our world tab. This is allowing you to publish the world. And so here we can see the name, we can create a description. We're gonna rate this moderate because it's gonna be a jumping game. So there's a little bit more to it. This will be a game when we're done with it. So we'll go ahead and call this a party game racing it's kind of racing it's kind of sports you know there's a lot that we could call this but i want this to be a party game it's going to be a lot of fun for a group of people that's my goal when we take a picture inside the world so let me show you how to do this real quick so remember we press up to go into the world if we come over to our trees here look at these trees that's so cool it's so fun to see them in person if we go to our home tab at the bottom left of our menu there's a like a selfie stick. And once we bring out our selfie stick, we can turn it around and now we can take a picture of our trees. And once it's finished saving, you're gonna see the picture appear right here. Then you close out of this, open up your menu again. And from our thumbnail, we can click update. And here we can select the image that we want and then click back. And you're gonna see this image update here shortly. So if you're having trouble, maybe click the button again and then press this and then press that. There we go. All right, we also have the ability to say this is a beta world, meaning it's not really done. We're just getting some testing done. We want people to try it out, find bugs. So that's what the beta world is for. Visible to public means whether or not it's publicly available to be seen and featured. And then we go to our player settings where we can define how many players and what's the minimum number of players. I know for this world, the minimum number of suggested players is gonna be two. So you could set this to be four or more. And we're going to go ahead and say maximum player count. Well, we want to make this a lot of people, but 20, there's a problem with 20. And I'll show it to you really quickly because when we have 20 players, our capacity, which is the third tab up here, is destroyed. And so, whoops, there's these menus are a little buggy right now while they still work on them. So you have to kind of drag it again. And if we go back to capacity, you're going to see it's at 95% with only three trees. Well, that's because you can see 95% of that is players. And so simulation and animation is where a lot of our world is going to be made up. So having 20 players just won't be feasible for this world. Geometric complexity is also really high because of player faces. If you're going to have 20 players, that means there has to be 20 geometric faces. And then we also have sound complexity at the bottom. Obviously, we don't have any sounds in here, so that hasn't been adjusted. But what I'd recommend us do for our world is aim for 12. We want this to be a party game, so 12 people seems like a really reasonable amount to have. If we go to our capacity, you're going to see that's going to give us 60% is already used up, 
but we have 40% to work with and that's not bad. So this is a good amount and I think this is going to be great, but we have to really work our tail off to make it fit in this 40%. And I'm going to show you some really cool tricks as we build this world. All right, so now that we're done with player settings, we're done with that. We go back to our publish tab and at the top, you're going to see two options. You can publish or you can unpublish. And I know they don't have like labels, but this just means unpublish. That's what the slash is. And this one means publish. So you press this button and it would publish the world. We're not ready to publish yet, but uh, maybe we'll publish it as a beta when we're done today. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna go to our scripting tab. Now the scripting tab is kind of our console where everything's happening. If we were running scripts, there'd be messages like error messages would appear here. You're gonna see the stop, reset, and play world. These are really powerful when you need to test something out that's in motion or an animation. So you hit stop, reset, and play, and that'll reset it back to normal. And last but not least, we have the settings icon. And I've been working our way up to this because this is where we're gonna to get to snapping. So before we get to the snapping, we're gonna actually start at the far right on player. Player persistent variables are super cool. They are used for tracking like players score, their money, their high score, etc. So you can create up to 25 of these per world, which is amazing. That's just a lot of different variables you can track for a single player. And they are tied to the player as ID. So when they leave the world and they come back, those scores will be saved, which is amazing. So that's what's so cool about these player persistent variables. And then we have comfort settings. Comfort assistance is that black ring that appears while you're building and moving around. Now I have it turned off. It looks better in the video, but I've also become comfortable with it off. When I started turning it off was really difficult. We also have visual style, which determines how is it gonna look. So if you had it on, whether it's black or it's a grid, this can be very important if you're building a lot and you get motion sick really easily. Keeping this on might be very important, but if you're not motion sick easily, definitely turning it off is also really nice. Going back to our build settings, you're gonna see we have the dominant hand, which I mentioned at the beginning. So you can change that from right to left, which will swap your controls. We have snap to point. So this is gonna determine how do we snap. So right now I have it at both because we can snap to objects. We can also snap to the grid. So the grid is this grid here and the objects are the objects we've created and the points on that object, which I'll show you in just a moment. Grid unit, I leave this at one meter because these are one meter squares and I like just thinking of the world as one meter, but you can really refine this as low as you wanna go. You can also get really high, like 100 meters. Object rotation, you can turn it off you can use snap to angle or you can use a free form. I recommend snap to angle because snapping to angle is really gonna allow you to get a precision that's just so nice when you're working on your world and you can set the angle here. I recommend 15 degrees, but there are options all the way up to 90 degrees. And now that we have our whole snapping setup, let's try it out because this is amazing. So if we come to our objects over here, you're gonna remember when we grouped these two objects together, or actually here, so we've only grouped this one together, but we grouped it based off of this object and then we selected the top object. So this top object is rotated to skew, but this bottom object is rotated kind of straight up and down. And that's why this box looks straight up and down. So on our left hand, you're gonna see the snap tool. By pulling down, we can select snapping. You're gonna see these orange points appear. These are our snap points. That's what we were talking about when we were talking about snap points. And then we can also snap to the grid. So I'm gonna start by reaching down here and grabbing it in the middle. And now you can see that it is snapping into location, which is kind of jittery, but that's the idea is it has to be locked into a specific spot. And so here I've locked it into this spot. I've also got it now upright. So this is now level, which is really cool. And from here, if we wanted to, we could actually duplicate. So we've got the duplicate tool selected and see this orange point here. If I grab this orange point, I can duplicate off of that orange point and come back to this orange point and line them up. So now I've got two trees in a line. So if you wanted to build a line of trees, that's totally possible. What's even more cool about the duplicate tool is once I've duplicated in this line, if I go to my right hand, there's a tool we haven't talked about yet. On the right side, you see that array function. And if you press joystick over to array, it's going to continue duplicating with equal distance between the trees. And you're just gonna get a super long line of trees. And that honestly is just the beginning of what you can do with arrays. And I'd like to just take a single moment to show you the power of arrays because they really are incredible. So if we open up our menu again, and we go to the build section and let's go ahead and grab, let's grab a macaroni. 
macaronis are fun, right? So we grab this macaroni, we're gonna level it off, and we're gonna imagine that this is a stairway. And so if we're gonna build a stairway, I just turned the snapping tool off so I can make this a little bit more precise. Now I can scale this down, I can scale this in, and now we're working on stairs. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to turn snapping back on, and now we can grab from here, so this snap point, we're gonna pull this up. Now this one is not the one we're gonna to snap to. This is just kind of a demo of how to get to where we're going because we need these to be spaced by at least one macaroni. Now that we have that spacing in there, we can grab from this object here and we can go to this center point of this top object and add a little bit of rotation and then hit the array tool and now we've got these amazing circular rotating stairs with slight gap and you can just keep this going. And that is a really basic example of what you can do with the array tool. You can make flowers among so much more. As you can see, this is just a super powerful tool to build macaroni staircases and so much more. Again, as you can see, I can select all those objects and then pull down to delete and now they're gone. And similarly with these trees, we really only want one of these. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all of these as well. There we go. Now that we've done that, let's talk about making groups and making sure they are aligned straight up. So remember this one here, it's pretty close to straight up, but it's not. So if we select this here and then select that, we've now selected it so that this is the base object. All the details are based off of this one on the left. So that's why it's in this square format, even though this one is rotated. Now we can group by putting our hand in and joystick to the left. And remember when we hold on to it with snapping selected, we have now have the ability to make sure it is snapped upright. Now that it's upright, we can then go to our red tool, turn snapping off, and then slide this back into the ground. There we go, that's exactly where we wanted it. Awesome, so now we've got this tree really nice and straight up and down. And this one I wanna show you exactly what not to do. So if we select on this green object first, and then we select here, you're gonna see that this is rotated. Now if I group this, and then we try to align this, so we turn snapping back on, that is what's gonna happen. And actually that's not the worst thing in the world. In fact, I kind of like it um, <laughs> in a really funny way. I actually kind of like this, but it's not what we're going for. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the undo button, hit the undo button again, and hit the undo button one more time. Now we have unselected it. We brought it back to this original state where they're separated and we're gonna do the same thing we did before, selecting the bottom object, grouping together, and then selecting to get it straight up and down. Now we have three perfectly upright trees in the exact right position. This is awesome. Today we have covered a lot of basics, but today is a crash course because we are gonna show you as much as possible. So another really cool trick is properties. We have not touched properties yet. And you're like, what the heck are properties? And I would just, again, I don't want you to get too worried about this. This stuff is super duper easy to understand. It just takes a little bit of getting used to it. So here we're going to turn off snapping because snapping affects menus as well. So now that I've turned it off, I can now put it in position. And now we've got this properties panel. And remember, this is for the group of two objects here. Now this properties panel is exciting. I want you to be excited because there is so much amazing content happening here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go over the top. At the very top, we have the name of the group. So we're gonna go ahead and select, so you can click and drag through to select text. You can also click throughout the text, but we're gonna select, delete, and this is gonna be called tree, and this was the tall tree, so we're gonna call this tree tall. All right, so we've got tree tall, and now we can go up here to the right of that, you're gonna see the zoom into object button. Let's try that out we are now inside of the grouping. So now if I wanted to make this different, I could slide this and make this even bigger. Remember, turn your snapping tool off and you went to slide smoothly. And so now I can make this have a really tall tree. I don't know that that's what I wanna do with our tall tree, so I'm gonna move that back down. But now that I've adjusted that, I can now leave the grouping by pressing this button. There's also another really cool trick to leave the group, which is by double pressing on your pointer finger, you can also leave the group. So you can either press the button here or double press your hand tool. Then from there we have the ungroup. This will delete the group and we'll lose all of our properties we've just created. So we're not gonna do that. The next thing that we have is the lock tool. So you can lock this object and now it is locked and then we can unlock it and now it is unlocked. And then from the right of there we have the X which allows us to close the properties panel. So again, to open the properties panel, you put your hand inside and you'll see the three dot icon up here. You press forward on your joystick, that's gonna open your properties panel. 
Now having gone through the top of this panel, we have three tabs, the behavior tab, the attributes tab, and the more tab. Let's go ahead and start with the attributes because this is the most straightforward. First of all, we have the position and this is the world position. So this is currently at negative 20 on the grid. It's down, so it's using the center point. So, or excuse me, it's up by two meters. So this is two meters up. So here's the center point. You can see it's about two meters up and it's also negative 12 on the grid. So we know that this position on the grid is negative 20 by negative 12 up by two. That is awesome because we can type in exactly where we want something to be. We can also see the rotation. We can type in the rotation. So this is zero, this is 90, this is 75. These are clean numbers because we used our snap tool to get it perfectly upright and rotated in such a way that we like. Then we have our scale, and scale is amazing. Watch this. If we come to this, our y, so this is x, y, z, our y value, if we make this multiply by 2, we now have made it twice on the y. And you can tell that the y is this green icon here. Now, normally y is up and down in Horizon, but because we have this object here rotated, remember when I said the first object you select determines the rotation? Well, this was a macaroni that was rotated like this, so upwards for the macaroni is now to the right. And so the other really easy way to go through these is to recognize the color. So red is R, green is G and B is blue, so it's B. So you have RGB, which is correlated to X, Y, Z. And so we know that if we're looking at the red, that that's the X value. If we're looking at the green, that's the Y value, and the blue is the Z value. And so we're going to go ahead and turn this back to one. But what's really cool about groups is it doesn't matter how much you've scaled the original object because the original object starts at one, one, one as well. But once you form a grouping, it saves those positions as one, 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 which is awesome and super useful. We'll be showing you how to use that even more in the next episode. Below that, we have tag. Adding a tag actually adds a lot of overhead to the world, so we're not going to add a tag. This is like calling it tree tall, but you need to know it in another object. Like say this tree could collide with this tree and it needed to know when it collided with a tall tree, then it would send off an event. So this is related to scripting, but basically we don't touch this unless we need to. And since trees typically don't move, we're probably not adding tags to our trees, at least not in this episode. Moving back to our behavior tab, this is one of the best tabs because watch what we can do here. We can make this invisible. Look at that, you can't see the tree anymore. Now we can turn the visibility back on like that, very cool. We also have collisions. So right now you can collide with this tree. If I go over here and I walk into the tree, you can see I'm colliding with it. I just, I hit it and I can't go anywhere. Now, if I come back here, I can turn collisions off and now I can stand in the tree. Look at this, I'm inside of the tree. I can like go out to the edge. I can come out through it. And this allows you to make hide and seek or many, many other options, but just the ability for it to be non-collidable is awesome. The other benefit to non-collidable is it makes your world run a lot smoother. It doesn't really affect your capacity so much, like a little bit, but really it does increase the smoothness of your world because the rendering engine doesn't have to worry about physics. So if you build a really complex world and it's like there's frame dropping, going through objects that you don't need to be collidable, like I often do trees because you're most of the time as you're walking around, you're avoiding trees by default, um, but it's also kind of fun to hide in trees. But anyway, so turning off collisions on trees is not a bad idea, but for this game, we do need collisions on. And last but not least, the motion. Does the object have motion? For instance, we have animated where you can record or play an animation. For instance, if we wanted this tree to go up and down, I just hit record, so I hit record. Now I go over here to the slide button, I slide this up, I let go, I hit stop, and now when I hit play, when I hit play, it'll actually slide the tree up. And I can actually come back down here and hit loop and change this to loop back and forth. And now when we hit play, it's going to go back and forth, up and down. Look at that. So now we've got a floating tree. So if you made like a tree island, that would be really cool. But that's a little fast, don't you think? And the other thing that we need to do is make sure it plays on start by hitting this checkbox there. So now it starts when the world starts. But the speed, we can actually adjust here at the bottom and make this like 0.1. And so now you could have these islands of floating trees and the trees would slowly go up and down. You could have each tree at a different speed. So they actually kind of like are different motions. And that is really just the beginning of how cool animations are. Now we're not going to continue to keep this animation as it's not relevant for our world, but seriously, there's so much you can do with animations. 
Um, I have lots of videos on them, like literally check them out. They're so much fun. Going on to the next one, interactive. So now that it's no longer animated, by switching it to interactive, we've deleted that animation. We now, well, actually I haven't deleted it. It's still there. You could still use it if you wanted to, but it's, it's no longer available. And now when we go to interactive, we have grabbable physics or both. So when it's grabbable by default, watch this. By default, when it's grabbable, you can just pick it up and swing it around. Look at this giant tree I can pick up. Oh, I got a tree. <laughs> and that is a lot of fun, but it's not really realistic. The other thing that you can do is physics. And for a tree, um, yep, yeah, that's... That's a tree falling over, all right. So <laughs> there's a time and a place for a tree to have physics. And you could actually make a tree fall over like you'd cut it down with physics using uh, scripting. But in this case, we're not doing that. But that, that was actually pretty fun. And then if you do both, it can now fall over. So it's going to fall over. And then you can also come in here while it's falling over and grab it. And now that it has physics, you can toss it away because physics and horizon are amazing. <laughs> and by amazing, I mean they're very inaccurate. But what we can do to make them more accurate is save physics material and make it feather. And feather isn't exactly the most accurate, but it has high air resistance. And heavy air resistance is really quite important because watch this. Oh, you know what? It still flies like crazy. You know what? Physics and Horizon just are weird with big objects. So don't recommend making big objects physics unless you just like to have fun. And I like to have fun, so I would actually leave that. But for now, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. But what I will mention is you do have a lot of options to choose from, whether it's feather, hardwood, ice. And I'll quickly run through what these do. So feather creates air resistance, which means when you throw it, it's going to interact with the air and slow down. It's also very lightweight. So when it falls, it falls like a feather, even with a large object like this. Then we have hard wood. Hard wood falls way fast, so it's designed to be like hard wood. It bounces very low. Ice slides really well, but when it hits a wall, it stops. Metal is also just kind of a heavy object that just doesn't actually bounce very well. Then there's rubber ball, which bounces a lot, like a bouncy ball. There's soft wood, which bounces a little bit. It's a little bit lighter than hardwood. And then there's super ball, and super ball bounces indefinitely. It just continues bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. It's crazy. It's a lot of fun, but it's crazy. And then there's super ice, which just slides indefinitely. And so these are all a lot of fun. I recommend keeping it at default for most things, but you can see there are some really cool options in here. Oh, we can also turn gravity off, so that's cool. So you can have it interact with the physics but not have gravity so this way it's just going to float off into the ether <laughs> so anyway we're not going to use any motion on this tree because trees don't have motion but as you can see there's a lot of amazing properties just inside of this little section right here going further we have the more tab and from the more tab we can get collision offense this is a scripting trick and you can check if the tree has collided with players or objects so like if you wanted to see the tree get chopped down you'd use objects tagged axe you can also do both players and trees. So if a tree, if a player got hit by a tree, maybe the player gets like respawned or something. So there's a lot of really cool tricks. And then we can hand grab. So this is if someone grabs this, you can hand it to yourself only, which is what I recommend, or you can do it to anyone. So if you have it set to anyone, anyone can grab the object out of your hand. But if it's set to no one, then not even yourself can grab it out of your hand. Once it's in your hand, that hand has to hold on to it until it lets go. But only you means you can grab it out of your hand into your other hand. So I prefer only you as my favorite. The next thing you'll see is avatar attachable, which if you use sticky, you can place this tree on your head and walk around with the tree on your head. It's pretty funny. If you use the anchor, you can set the exact anchor position on the person's body, whether it's their head or their torso. So that way it's locked into a specific spot. This is great for like hats or outfits that you really want to always be in the right location. But otherwise I recommend sticky because sticky allows you to get a lot more fun with it. So if you have it on sticky any, you can place it anywhere on your body and just lock it in location and it's just it's pretty funny and you can also make it sort of sticky only to the head or sticky only to the torso and that is your crash course in the properties panel the other thing that you should know about the properties panel is if you open up the properties panel and it happens to be far away or the sizing isn't right when you press 
put your hand inside and then press and hold while it's open. You can actually move it around and make it like relative. So sometimes your properties panel will get teleported really far away. And so by pressing in and holding, it'll teleport it back. But do keep in mind, it does have to be open. So if I have it closed and I try to do that, all it's going to do is just open it. So you have to wait for it to be open and you'll know it's open because there'll be a black line coming out of it. And that will indicate that the properties panel say is like way over here. And then you come back here, press and hold and it's back. Super easy. But is that it for the crash course today? Well, I think not. There's one last trick I want to show you. If you put your hand inside of this object here and we go to the paintbrush. Remember I said we had access to a paintbrush tool? Well, here's where it comes in handy. So now we have the previous color we had selected, which was brown. So I can select that brown. But actually, I really wanted green. So if I come over here and put it inside of this, you can see it highlights green. But I have an eyedropper tool now. And if I eyedropper tools my joystick to the left, I can now select the green and repaint this tree. This is super useful because you could even create a whole set of custom colors. So for instance, if we go in and grab an object, just a generic object, and we grab our paint tool, we paint this green, open up the properties panel. There was one property you didn't see in here. And if we go into the attributes tab, from our attributes tab, when we're looking at a singular object, we can see the color of that object. And here we have RGB, so that's red, green, blue, and we can affect exactly where it's at. So if we want green to be higher, we can come over here and change this to be 75, and now it's more vibrantly green. And this is really awesome because now that I've created this green, I could have my own palette of colors rather than using the default palette of colors. And then I can use my hand tool to grab the eyedropper and choose this green to be the green on all my trees. And I actually kind of like this green. Oh man, do I want to go swampy green or mid Oh, you know what? We're going with this green. It just looks better. That was just a shot in the dark, but I really like it. And now that we're done with this, we we'll probably won't be using this again. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it because we can always grab the color from these trees here. Okie dokie. You guys have learned a lot in today's video. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. And the next one, we're going to go into scripting and I'm going to have built a little bit more of this world. So if you're working on your own world, feel free to go ahead and learn how to build other objects, build some water, make it non-collidable so you can actually sink into the water. It's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to see you in the next one. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. It seriously helps the channel grow. We really appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.